Okay, welcome back to the Institute. Um, this time we're going to take a look at this sample mega work energy problem, but we're going to look at part B down here. How far does the block slide between points C and D? So we're going to be sliding somewhere over here. We're going to have our little block is eventually going to come to a stop somewhere on here. And this is what we're trying to figure out is how far does it slide from here until it comes to a stop. Now you might just say it's going to go all the way to D and that's perfectly fine, but we're trying to find this distance down here. So we're trying to figure out what this is. Um, one of the things that I put up here already is some of the concepts or some of the numbers that we have as well as our equation. Again, because we don't have any springs in this particular problem, we actually don't have any elastic potential energy. So I'm going to go ahead and take my eraser and I'm going to erase it. Get rid of that particular part of the equation. We don't have to even worry about it. Um, this one's going to be a little bit different. We do actually have work being done. And the reason why I would say we actually do have work being done is because of this friction down here. So because we actually have friction acting on this thing, we're going to have work. So the work portion of this is actually going to be the force of friction multiplied by the displacement of the object. Now that's not actually going to be all the way from the very top going down and sliding and going all the way to here. The displacement we're just going to look at is this part. And so this is going to be the only displacement we have to worry about. Now the reason why that's the only displacement we have to worry about is all of this was frictionless. So our coefficient of friction was zero. We're frictionless. We don't have to worry about it during this part. Um, the other part of this particular equation that a lot of people mess up is the force of friction. It's not just the coefficient of friction, it's the force of friction. So we actually have to go back to the fun equation. So this is actually going to be mu times n times d, where n in this particular case is going to be the normal force on this block when it gets over here. So when the block is sitting right here, what kind of normal force is acting on it? Now that normal force, since it's sitting on a horizontal surface here, is just going to equal the weight of the block. So we just have to worry about the weight of the block. So that's just going to equal m times g. And so in place of this n over here, we're actually going to have mu times mg, because that's what our normal force is going to be, times d. Now one last little thing is the work being done here the force of friction is actually going to be acting to the left. So our force of friction is going to be acting this way, but the displacement of the object is actually going to be to the right. So because of that, they are actually 180 degrees away from each other, which means that this is actually going to be a negative work over here. So I need to actually put this in as negative, put a little negative sign on there. So I've got negative mu, which we have down here in the equation, mass, which we have up here, gravity, which we know is our 9.8 meters per second squared, and then d, and d is what we're after. Then over here for our kinetic energy, we have our one-half mass times our final velocity squared minus our initial velocity squared. C squared minus initial velocity squared, like that. However, we want to bring this thing to a stop. So if it, we're just trying to figure out it, how far it slides until it comes to a stop, then our final velocity is actually going to be zero. So really what we have here, this part is one half mass, but we have a zero minus vi squared. So this is actually going to be negative, and this is going to be vi squared. So we just have to worry about that part. So that's kind of neat. And then next up, we have our change in gravitational potential energy. So adding to this our mass times gravity times our final height minus our initial height. Now this one's a little bit weird um, because whenever we do this, we actually have to take into account a variety of different things. 
One, I know that this object is going to go from point A all the way down here to point B and then come back up to point C. Um, but I don't actually have to use any of this little path down here. That is actually not relevant when I don't have any friction acting on it. So because of that, I can actually kind of ignore that part. And I can just say that it starts up here, 15 meters above this point, and then finishes here. So like I mentioned before, we get to kind of pick whatever our final height is going to be. So if I make this level section be a height of zero, and this is the initial height up here, then I can actually say that my final height is zero and my initial height is the number I have that I'm starting out at, I'm basically my 15. So when I actually solve that, my final height here is going to cancel. It's gonna become zero and my initial height is going to be my 15. So when I'm actually solving for that, I have just minus M times G times my initial height. And now I have a way of actually finding all of this lovely stuff because we're going to start off with gravitational potential energy. But when we finish, we're going to have basically work being done. And so the work being done during this last little section, it has to get rid of that kinetic energy. It also has to change the gravitational potential energy. Now, if you notice, everything has a negative sign on it. That means I can actually get rid of all those negative signs if I want to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here with my eraser. I'm gonna erase this negative sign. I'm gonna erase this negative sign. And I'm gonna make this become a positive sign. So I'm going to actually add it. So that's one way to kind of go about it and we just don't have to worry about it. Now I can put in all my numbers and I'm going to just finish this out by just writing it all in black. So the mu mg that I have over here is the 0.75 times the mass, which is five times gravity, which is 9.8 and then D. And I don't know what D is, that's what I'm trying to find. And then I have my one half the mass, which is five, times the initial velocity, which was one. That's squared, but it doesn't really change it. And then I have my initial gravitational potential energy, which is five times 9.8 times the 15. And then just a big math problem, I just have to solve for it. One of the things I think is kind of neat about this though, when you don't have elastic potential energy, just like I mentioned before, the mass of the object is actually not relevant. If you notice, this is multiplied by mass, this is multiplied by mass, and this is multiplied by mass. I could actually cancel all of these masses out of here if I wanted to. I can't cancel the 9.8s because my kinetic energy doesn't depend on 9.8, the acceleration of gravity. If I just had gravitational potential energy and friction, then I could cancel out gravity as well. But since I have kinetic energy, I can't do that, but I can cancel out the masses, which is kind of neat. Also, if I was moving faster, I would have to go farther. If I was coming from higher up, I would have to go farther. So we have a direct relationship with those things. So to finish this out on the left side, since I canceled out the mass, we end up with 7.35 times d. Over here, this is just gonna be one half because one squared is just one and one times one half is just one half. 9.8 times 15 ends up as 147. So the whole thing is 147.5 because I'm adding 0.5. So really the kinetic energy is not doing a whole lot to this. Um, it's mostly the gravitational potential energy. Finally, I would divide by that 7.35 to figure out my D, my distance, and my distance would be 20 meters, or I actually get 20.068. Um, it looks like I've got three, two, three, two. So I really could leave it as just 20. Sometimes I would write this as 20.1 meters just to kind of show that I do actually know it to the, the next decimal place, or I could just put 20 with a decimal point after it if I really wanted to say that I've got two sig figs, or the ultimate way is 2.0 times 10 to the first power meters. I'm not always a big fan of that one just because I don't feel like you always need to, but I would usually accept any of those. 
So this is our second version of the mega work energy problem. This is one where we actually have friction doing work to it. So this is going to be a common extra little statement up here. This little negative mu mgd. Um, this is one of the things that happens. Sometimes I rearrange this and I put the G in front and I, I mentioned that it's gummed. Um, so when you actually have friction acting, just like I mentioned the gum equation back with friction, um, when something's sliding on a horizontal surface, it would get gummed up and that work would slow down your kinetic energy or your gravitational potential energy. It would change your energy. So this has been the next edition of the Institute. Um, we'll work some more with the mega work energy later in this week.